feels like the Arizona Diamondbacks brought the heat with them from the desert and from a sweltering Wrigley Field. We're set for Cubs baseball on WGN Sports Game 2 of a weekend set. The Diamondbacks and Cubs and we welcome Cub fans from all over the country watching on WGN America, America's home for baseball. Hi again everyone, Bob Brenly and Len Casper with you. The Cubs with an 8-1 win after a long rain delay yesterday and they were led by Alfonso Soriano who arguably had one of the best games of his entire career. I can't imagine a game better than Alfonso Soriano had yesterday. You know Len, a lot of people consider this a rebuilding year for the Cubs and in many aspects it is but talk about veteran leadership. Alfonso Soriano and after not homering in his first 30 games this season has hit 17 in his last 50 games leading the National League over that time period. I think a lot of scouts bought a ticket to this one. Ryan Dempster uh, part of all kinds of trade rumors around baseball. He's coming off a great performance right before the break and hasn't allowed a run in four starts. It's been an amazing run for Ryan Dempster as good as anybody has ever seen Ryan Dempster throw the ball coming off the disabled list some questions about where he would be physically. He answered those questions with that performance against the Mets. He leads the league in ERA Joe Saunders the left hander comes off the DL today. He will make his first start in almost a month Yeah, with a left shoulder soreness. He was on the DL. That's a problem when you're a left handed pitcher. All right. The Cubs bats have been a lot better against left handed starters here lately led by their cleanup man Alfonso Soriano will have the lineups and all the action from Wrigley Field next. Baseball brought to you by Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Pepsi Max, the official soft drink of Major League Baseball. Zero calories, maximum Pepsi taste. The Illinois Lottery. Do you believe in the power of possibility? The Illinois Lottery. Anything's possible. And by Ford, manufacturers of more fuel efficient vehicles than any other brand. Check them out at your local Ford store or online at localfordstores.com. Time to look at today's Mazda drive to victory and what the Cubs need to do today is follow the veteran leaders. Ryan Dempster on the mound having a bang up season. Alfonso Soriano another crusty veteran out there in left field a career day yesterday. For the Diamondbacks, they need a return to form of left-hander Joe Saunders. Their rotation is badly in need of help. Drive to Victory brought to you by your local Chicagoland Mazda dealers. See your Chicagoland Mazda dealers for a test drive today at driveamazda.com. 
Now Kirk Gibson's Diamondbacks starting lineup held to one run on seven hits yesterday by Paul Mahalam and two Cub relievers. Parr gets to start in left for Jason Kubel. Hill, Upton, Montero, two through four. Paul Goldschmidt having a very good year at first. Stephen Drew recently off the DL. Lots of success here. Young is in center. Blum at third. Joe Saunders, the pitcher. Take a quick look at the Cubs defensively after an out. Looks like Gerardo Parr is ready to go. And so is Ryan Dempster. 27 consecutive scoreless innings going into today's action. A 199 ERA that leads the National League. And ball one outside. And we're underway. This is the longest scoreless inning streak by a Cubs starter since Ken Holtzman. 1971. 27 straight innings. Holtzman had a 33 inning scoreless streak in 1969. We appreciate Stats Inc. and Ed Hardig for their assistance. And uncovering those interesting numbers going way back in the Cubs history. Para fouls back one and two. We look at the numbers behind Ryan Dempster's great season up to this point. Certainly the one loss record not a true indicator of how outstanding he has been this season. He has four wins and in every win he hasn't allowed a run. So I think that's one of the keys today. <laughs> yeah. Don't give up a run. And it's funny Len you know as well as I do a lot of starting pitchers on the day they throw uh, kind of seclude themselves in their locker or they find a quiet place in the clubhouse. They don't really Yuck it up as much as they would on a normal day as that ball's grounded to the right side. Barney should make the play, no problem. Dempster was just calm, cool, collected, laughing, walking around the clubhouse like he does every other day of the week. Now we're going to check out how the Cubs take the field defensively. Behind Ryan Dempster, brought to you by Pepsi Max, the official soft drink of Major League Baseball. Zero calories, maximum Pepsi taste. Dale Swings line up against a left handed starter is Soriano in left Reed Johnson in center Jeff Baker over in right it'll be Balbuena Castro Barney and Rizzo third to first across the infield Giovanni Soto with back to back starts behind the plate and he'll be catching veteran right hander Ryan Dempster. Aces second baseman Aaron Hill low for ball one. Kind of hard to believe considering how hot it's been here this weekend, but the wind has blown in both days. North wind at seven miles an hour yesterday. The huge thunderstorm really cooled it off. Today, an east wind at seven miles an hour, even though it's 83 degrees and feels a lot hotter in the sun. Well, the wind blowing in uh, off the lake didn't seem to bother Alfonso Soriano much yesterday. That first home run that he hit land might have been the longest one we've seen here at Wrigley this year. Way out onto Waveland Avenue. Inside. Two and one the count. Cubs have won six of their last seven here at home and now are 20 and 20 at Wrigley. Swing and a miss. Two and two. you're looking for the, the biggest reason Ryan Dempster has been so good this year. I think it's been pitching to the scouting reports. We talk so much about the Cubs over shifting. We've got a big chunk of Giovanni Soto. And if you stick to the game plan in this system here the Cubs have built and hit your spots you're going to have success. Well, he's hit his spots with regularity this year. I think uh, perhaps secondary to that is his ability to to do exactly that. Throw the ball where he wants to with a lot more consistency than he has in the past. Starlin Castro. Throw out Hill. Two outs. Get the umpires for you. Marvin Hudson. Has the plate, Brian Rungi, Tim McClellan, the crew chief, and Ted Barrett to have the bases. Veteran group.
Now Justin Upton. Who went 0 for 4 in the opener. Talking about hitting your spots. Paul Mahalam has done that lately. He's won three consecutive starts. He's given up two runs. Total in those three outings. And Dale Swain talking about Paul Mahalam's outing yesterday. He really did it without one of his weapons. He really didn't have a good curveball all afternoon. So figured out a way to work his way through this Diamondbacks lineup, spotting his fastball on both sides of the plate, throwing some change ups, had a good slider, but never had a good feel for his curveball yesterday. A 2 0 slider, up and cranked it up. And missed it. That's a little better grip. I don't think it worked. <laughs> drops here today. Can't hang on to anything. Hit some fly balls out the right field and see what happens. Upton has been. Uh, Subject of lots of trade rumors in Arizona. We talked about it yesterday. Numbers are down. Still just 24 years old and a ton of talent. In a great year last year, hit 31 home runs. And he draws a two out walk. They'll bring up Miguel Montero. He's Pretty clean up today. Jason Kubel not in the lineup because of a tight hamstring. After waiting out that three and a half hour plus rain delay yesterday, there was some treacherous footing in the outfield. We saw, uh, especially the Diamondbacks. As they tried to plant and get the ball back into the infield, Kubel slipped in left, Upton slipped in right center field. It appears to be in great condition here today, though. Arizona swept the Cubs in June in Phoenix, but the Cubs got that 8 1 win yesterday. Wrap up the season series tomorrow afternoon right here on WGN. Kurt Gibson got an early workout today. Well, the Diamondback skipper and their third base coach Matt Williams uh, running the bleachers here at Wrigley Field. Made me tired just watching. It. The big Marine, that's what they called him during his playing days with the San Francisco Giants and Arizona Diamondbacks. One of the best fielding third baseman to, to ever man the position. First player to hit a home run for three different teams in the World Series, Matt Williams. See, it's one of those days Ryan Dempster may be taking a little extra time early on because of the conditions. Easy to lose your breath on a day like this. The kick in the one two pitch up and away. Well, it's been a while since we've had a WGN Cubs broadcast, so we'd like to hear from you. Keep in touch. Lennon Bob at Tribune.com. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. Taro asked for time and got it late. Upton walked with two outs. A two two count on the batter Montero. Call strike three. 
Inside corner. First strikeout for Dempster. 28 innings in a row now for Dempster. See Max, the official soft drink of Major League Baseball. Zero calories, maximum Pepsi taste. Bunch of right handed hitters in the lineup against the lefty Saunders. Johnson, Castro, the lefty Rizzo, Soriano Baker, and Soto in the middle. Darwin Barney at second. Left handed swinging Luis Valbuena at third. And Dempster, the pitcher, hitting ninth. Take a look at the Diamondbacks defensively this afternoon. Par in left field, Young in center, Upton over in right field. It'll be veteran Jeff Blum at third base today. Steven Drew and Aaron Hill make up the double play combo up the middle. Country strong, Paul Goldsmith over there at first base. Miguel Bontero doing the catching today for left hander Joe Saunders. Saunders, a 12 game winner last year for the Diamondbacks, an ERA just over three and a half. His ERA was very respectable this season, although, much like Ryan Dempster, the one loss record, uh, not what he would like. Well, if uh, you wanted to, partner, you could just pull out your notes from June 22nd <laughs> because Joe Saunders was supposed to <laughs> open that series against the Cubs at Chase Field. And just a few moments before the game started, he had trouble getting loose in the bullpen. Was scratched. Josh Colmenter got the start. And the next day, Saunders went on the DL. And this is his first outing since. So officially activated today. I don't have my notes from yesterday's game. I'm just saying if you <laughs> wanted to and you had them. <laughs> I know it's all upstairs That's now. That's right. I do know that Joe Saunders will feature a fastball, a curveball, and a straight changeup. He will occasionally try to cut that fastball in on the right handed hitters. Pete Johnson. He has been the Cubs leadoff man especially last weekend in New York. He. Has done some damage. There's only four for 17 lifetime against Joe Saunders but all four hits have gone for extra bases. He used to really crowd the plate. Then we noticed he backed off. I think he's maybe kind of in the middle. <laughs> not way off the plate, but he's not hovering right over the dish. I think he picked a happy medium. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, when he was on top of the plate, it seemed like he was standing in front of the catcher. But when he backed off the plate, he was almost in the on deck circle. So, yeah, I think he's found a happy medium. That's frustrating for an opposing pitcher when you make what you feel is a good pitch and Joe Saunders did make a good pitch on Reed Johnson and Reed just stuck his bat out there got a piece of it fouled it off. 
Hoping that Saunders will make a mistake where he can do some damage. Reminder Cubs baseball in high definition is brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports as Johnson strikes out. After fouling off that sinking fastball in the outside corner, Joe Saunders comes back with a four seam fastball up high in the zone and gets Reed Johnson to chase a bad pitch. Saunders, former Angel, first round pick of the Angels in 02 out of Virginia Tech. He's back on two time All Star Starlin Castro. Battle of the Beards here today on the mound. Ryan Dempster's a little thicker, a little red, touch of gray here and there. One and one on Starlin. The ways to go to catch him. Yeah, though. if it's a battle of the beards, there's your winner. Get hard on the ground, right to third baseman Jeff Blum. There's Anthony Rizzo. Two more hits yesterday. That has 19 in 13 games. He had 18 last year in 49 contests with the Padres. Quickly 0 and 2. We talked about it at length in the ball game yesterday. The impressive thing about Rizzo's outing is the fact he was driving the ball to the opposite field again. He's not strictly a power hitter, not strictly a pole hitter. Certainly he's quick enough to turn on just about anybody's fastball should they try to come inside. But if you try to nibble away at that outside corner, he's willing to shoot that ball the opposite way. Ball cut off by Blum. To end the inning. Cubs go down in order. Nothing, nothing after one. And news will be in Cooperstown beginning this Wednesday. Ron Sano will be inducted on Sunday. And a recap of the big weekend. Next Sunday, July 22nd, celebrating Santo at 9.30 Central. Underway here in the second, Paul Goldschmidt. 
lines one foul. Also, uh, there is a viewing party here at Wrigley Field, the Captain Morgan Club, on July 22nd. Starting at 11 a.m. Central. And a roller in the center, and that's the first hit of the afternoon. And the Cubs will host Ron Santo Day here at Wrigley on July 27th against the Cardinals. Now Stephen Drew recently off the disabled list. Yesterday in his 10th game back had his first two hit performance of the season. That was in the eighth spot. He's hitting sixth in this one. I mean, Ryan Dempster and Giovanni Soto would uh, do well to pay attention to Paul Goldschmidt over there at first base. Not your prototypical base stealer, but he's eight out of nine this season. Most teams don't pay him much attention. He gets a walking lead and just keeps going. That's foul. Stephen Drew has always hit the Cubs well and really has thrived at Wrigley. And has done well against Ryan Dempster, five for nine in his career with a home run. Old Schmidt's a big guy, but he has to be. He has to have those broad shoulders to fit his surname on the back of the jersey. <laughs> Foul. Hey, Cubs fans, if you want to manage a game along with Dale Swain, log on to WGNTV.com right now and click on the WGN Sports Game Zone banner to connect to all the up to the minute stats and information while you're watching at home. Game Zone is sponsored by The Great Escape, pools, patio sets, play sets, hot tubs, and more. I'll tell you, Lynn, just watching the ball game yesterday and uh, this at bat so far by Stephen Drew. I was talking a moment ago about Anthony Rizzo and his willingness and ability to hit the ball to the opposite field. Uh, coming back off the DL, looks like Stephen Drew is strictly in pull mode right now. Everything he's hit has been to right field or foul down the right field line. He probably hits yeah. one the other way. Out of play. It's kind of a defensive swing there, trying to protect the plate, much like Reed Johnson did in his first at bat against Joe Saunders. Drew fractured his right ankle in July of last year. That ended his season. Knocked him out of first half this year. As you would imagine, they're trying to protect that area of his lower right leg. Goldschmidt takes off, and Drew hits it foul. Well, we've talked about this with other base stealers, potential base stealers. Really, you just need to make them stop. I don't believe Goldschmidt has the kind of acceleration to steal a base if you make him come to a complete stop over there at first base. He just tries to keep edging off, edging off, keep his momentum moving towards second base. And if you don't make him stop, that's when he'll just take off. Not running. Another tap or foul. Dempster's 35 years old, 6'2, 215. Came to the Cubs as a free agent prior to 2004, and he was rehabbing from Tommy John surgery. And his Cubs career in the bullpen became the closer. He's been a starter since 2008. His original role in the big leagues as Soriano makes a catch. Yeah, 
And let's take a look at today's Illinois Lottery. Anything's possible player, and it is Ryan Dempster. As you look at his career as a Chicago Cub. Anything's possible player brought to you by the Illinois Lottery, who each day make anything possible. This is his 372nd career game as a Cub. He's in the top seven in games pitched in franchise history. Chris Young with a bouncer. Castro the flip. Barney the turn. And the Cubs turn another double play. They've done that now nine consecutive games. We're scoreless. Gibson swings and a fly ball to deep right field. This is going to be a home run. Unbelievable. A home run for Gibson. And the that was Kirk Gibson's walk-off home run versus the A's back on October 15th, 1988. This year, Budweiser will donate $5,000 for every Cubs walk-off win to Folds of Honor. Find us at Facebook.com slash Budweiser for details. One of the most dramatic home runs in Postseason history. That was game one off Dennis Eckersley. Jack Buck with that iconic call. A couple of great calls. Vince Scully as well that night. She is gone. He hobbled around the bases. Swing and a miss. Soriano four hits two doubles two homers 12 total bases on Friday one of those hits was his 800th career extra base hit and he has worn out Diamondbacks pitching in his career 16 homers and 128 regular season at bats against Arizona. Swing and a miss, so he makes his first out of the series. New in 2012 is Cubs Authentic, the premier outlet for special MLB authenticated Cubs memorabilia. For game used balls, bases, and jerseys to autograph bats and photos, Cubs Authentic has the most exclusive Cubs memorabilia. Visit the Wrigley Field Concourse, the Cubs store. Or email Cubs Authentics at Cubs.com for all your Cubs memorabilia needs. Here's Jeff Baker who's been hot lately. Six for his last 11.
Gets his seventh start of the year in right. Are right, you ready for this? This is how ridiculously good these pro athletes are. Jeff took up golf, the game of golf, over the winter. He picked up neatly by Drew. Bob, he's already broken 80. Yeah. That's not right. Now, I think he played a lot of golf this winter, but really just started playing the game. Well, he's a good low ball hitter. That's right. the reason he'd be a good golfer. Well, we all grew up with one kid all the way through high school who was good at everything. You try to pick one sport you were better at than that guy. Say, oh, let's play, let's play ping pong. You ever played? No, I never played. You beat him like two games in a row, and then, oh, I get it now. He figures it out quickly. You ever played darts? No. Oh, wait, what's the? No. Oh. Week later. <laughs> All right, we've had enough of that. How about golf? <laughs> line in the left. Soto with the Cubs' first hit. He has hit some balls hard lately with nothing to show for it. Got that one off the end of the bat just a little bit, but got enough of it to squeak it through that left side of the infield for the Cubs' first knock of the game. Here's Barney with two outs. The Cubs with their first base runner. So Saunders works from the stretch for the first time. Hey, we're looking forward to uh, chatting with Jay Cutler, Bears quarterback, who got a rousing ovation when he threw out the ceremonial first pitch, and he will conduct the seventh inning stretch. And then he lit up the radar guy. Yes, he did. That was about the hardest ceremonial first pitch you'll ever witness. We'll get a look at it later as Barney bounces out to end the inning. After two, nothing, nothing. is brought to you by Bud Light Limerita. The ready to drink margarita with a refreshing twist of Bud Light Lime. Well, great to be back here at Wrigley Field. Partner, great to have you back here in the booth. And thanks to uh, Dave Soup Campbell for keeping that chair warm on the last road trip. And I know we had a good time Watching the uh, double A Tennessee Smokies. Oh yeah a lot of people to thank too. Len general manager Brian Cox down there in Tennessee his assistant GM Jeff Schof both were tremendous hosts couldn't have had a better time at the ballpark. Director of media relations Adam Klein was a great assistant and our buddy Mick Gillespie. 
And I forced my way onto his air a couple of times while I was there. And on to a fishing boat. Yeah, well, that's another story. That's going to take a little longer to get okay. into that one. Right. Also, a couple of really nice season ticket holders. Jeff Waymeyer, thank you for the pictures. And Sammy Harris tipping me off on where to go fishing. One and one the count on veteran switch hitting infielder Jeff Blum. Looks like Geo has something in his eyes, so Marvin Hudson giving Geo a little extra time. Blum earlier this year was on the 60 day DL with a sprained left oblique back on July 2nd. <laughs> Too many secrets here. Blum with 51 previous at bats against Ryan Dempster. 294 average. High in the air, shallow right center, Castro underneath. Sure you check out our WGN baseball blog, WGNTV.com, brought to you by Jeff Vukovic, nationwide agent serving the area for 33 years. You can contact Jeff at JeffVuk.com. Nationwide is on your side. I have a post on the Cubs' current hot streak, and tomorrow we resume Stat Sunday. It's been a while since we've had a Sunday broadcast here on WGN, but tomorrow's topic OPS Plus. There's more. Yes. Executive producer Bob Vorwald wrote the uh, blog post. It's very good. It really explains it well. And we will have some league rankings and show you how some of the Cubs stack up. And when you put a plus at the end of uh, some baseball numbers, what it does, Bob, is it just uh, kind of normalizes it to league average, park adjustments, all those things. So for OPS plus, if you're at 100, you'd be right at. The average, if you're below 100, like at 97, 98, you'd be below average. Anything above 100 is above average. Makes it fairly simple. As Saunders bounces out to Darwin Barney, let's step aside and see what's coming up on WGN. Another good number, ERA plus. You look at Ryan Dempster's career according to baseballreference.com. It's at 99, so I mean, right around average for his career. This year, his ERA at 199, so his ERA plus 201. <laughs> I mean, that is ridiculous. Your what? career OPS oh, plus. <laughs> Here we go. 106. Really? And in 1984, it was 131. Wow. So that's a good way to compare. So if you just give a number without context, sometimes it doesn't mean anything. But the era in which you played, and all those things really do matter. And as Para singles into left, you feel better now, right? You were nervous. Once again, <laughs> I would like to renegotiate my contract retroactively. Stacked up pretty well with the Saber metrics. Unfortunately, it was an area that nobody era that nobody paid attention to Saber metrics. Uh, by the way, that uh, feature is already on our blog. So uh, if you want to check that out, do your homework today, and you'll be ahead of the game tomorrow. There will be a test. Here's Aaron Hill, two outs, para aboard. Nothing, nothing tie in the third inning. Ryan Dempster, 29 scoreless innings in a row and counting. Hasn't allowed a run since May 30th against the Padres. At Milwaukee, at Minnesota, versus Boston, at the Mets. All zeros.
Is up and on deck. He walked in the first inning. Some birthday wishes this afternoon. Happy 11th to Lauren Abaticola. Happy 15th to Madeline, her sister. Also want to send out happy birthday wishes to my dad, Joe Casper, watching right. back in Michigan. Vacated two and one. They yeah, tried to request time from home plate umpire Marvin Hudson, but in Marvin's estimation, it was a little bit too late in Ryan Dempster's delivery to grant the timeout, so he just stepped out of the box and took the pitch. Unfortunately, Dempster couldn't find his own with it. Yeah, once you take your hand off the bat and that pitcher is delivering the ball to home plate, you might as well get out of the way. Castro couldn't get it. And they had back to back two out singles. And we want to wish our colleague Steve Stone a happy 65th birthday. So he's he and my dad were born on the same day. So next time I see Stoney, I'm gonna have to say you're as old as my dad. Think he'll appreciate that? <laughs> They're a young 65. Yeah, that's though. right, that's right. Did your dad win a Cy Young Award? He did not. Oh. Probably could have. Here's Upton with two on and two down. The White Sox had a late night last night, but it was a successful one ultimately as they beat the Royals in 14 innings, 9 8. And guess who had the big RBI? Kevin Euclid's about that. Proverbial change of scenery has done him good. Jonathan Broxton blew the save in the ninth. Addison Reed blew the save in the twelfth. And 18 pitchers were used. Nine for each club. It was a franchise record for the Royals using nine pitchers in one game. Who's available today in the bullpens? Whoever can pitch. <laughs> Not matchups or anything. No. Nope. Who's available? Yeah, who can give me an inning? Bounce to Rizzo. This will end the inning. As the Diamondbacks strand a couple zeros in the third.
Yes, always in moderation, but life, love, and loot. There's quarterback Jay Cutler. <laughs> I think the thumb's okay. Talk to him about that after he sings. He's nervous. Not yet. Luis Valbuena takes that bunt along with him up the line, but it falls foul. We've got a correction to make, and uh, it's to a tweeter, John Frazier. The season series will not end tomorrow. Forget it. We'll go back to Arizona in late September. And we'll be down to what? The highs will be 99? Yeah, mid 90s. Cubs final road series of the year actually It'll be the uh, final three days of September in Arizona. Way out in front of home plate. And then we saw Luis Valbuena try to bunt his way on here to start this bottom half of the third inning. A lot of times against a left handed pitcher, they have a tendency to really fall off to the third base side of the field, uh, leaving a hole on that right side of the infield if you can get that bunt uh, toward the second baseman. But Bill Saunders is in real good fielding position after he releases the ball. Past the mound and into center. Hey fans, the new Chicago Cubs baseball summer camps offers children ages 5 to 13 of all abilities the ultimate major league experience for eight one week sessions in six convenient locations around the Chicago area. Join fellow teammates for a week of top notch baseball instruction, exclusive access, and unforgettable moments. Visit Cubs.com slash camps to sign up your future Cub today. Ryan Dempster will try to do what he does best at the plate, and that is lay down a sack bunt. Bunted that one foul. I believe he doesn't have one this year. Yeah, I was just looking at that. I thought that's amazing. It has to be a misprint, but uh, no sack bunts this year. But I think if Dale Swaim had to pick a pitcher to go to the plate and put down a sacrifice bunt as a pinch hitter, it would be Ryan Dempster. Led the majors in 08 with 19. He has 84 in his career. 10 last year, but still without one in 2012. Keep an eye on Mark Trumbo today for the Angels as they play the Yankees in the Bronx. Trumbo has homered in five straight games against the Yankees. Walked in his first at bat. They are tied at two in the bottom of the second. Jerome Williams and Freddie Garcia. Yankees won six to five last night. Mark Teixeira, two homers, five RBIs. Here's the bunt. And it's the first sack hit of the year for Dempster. It really is a skill, the ability to bunt that ball out toward the end of the bat so it bounces once or twice in the grass out in front of home plate and just dies in front of the defenders. Obviously the goal when you're swinging the bat is to hit the barrel because that's where the sweet spot is. That's how you're going to drive the ball farther. But when you're trying to bunt the ball you want to bunt it out near the end of the bat so it deadens the ball and doesn't roll out to the defenders. Reed Johnson 
with the Cubs first man in scoring position. That's Valbuena at second. He bunts toward third. And he's safe. And they're at the corners with only one out. Surveyed the infield and found a spot. Watch the angle on Reed's bat as he gets that ball out in front of home plate. Guides it right down that third baseline. Jeff Blum playing back. Saunders looking for help from his third baseman. Realizes that by the time he gets over there to pick it up, they're not going to have a play. Great bunt. RBI chance for Castro. Joe Saunders has been a lot better on the road than at home. A chase field of 501 ERA, just 182 on the road. Hill. Drew saved at first, so Castro's speed buys an RBI, and the Cubs have the lead. I think a crack bat helped too. <laughs> well, may have slowed that one down just enough to give Starlin Castro an opportunity to beat out the relay throw to first. Always tougher to turn that double play from the right side of the infield. Probably just about any other player on the Cubs roster that is a double play. Look at Reed Johnson in his effort to disrupt that throw by Stephen Drew. Cubs on the board. 44th RBI for Castro. And now it's Rizzo, two outs. So bites it off. Well, Saunders was born in Springfield, Virginia. Last year was an 08 with the Angels. He was an All Star, won 17 games. Two hundred twelve innings, a career high last year, thirty three starts. Young in center to end the inning. Cubs get a run, however, as Castro able to beat out that fielder's choice. One nothing.
first replay of the game. Well, I'm telling you, yesterday the animals were pairing up two by two. Noah ran to Home Depot to buy more nails. They used to call those gully busters. I mean, it poured for the better part of an hour. The grounds crew had their work cut out for them, but as usual, Roger Baird and the boys were up to the task. See what's possible with AT&T U-verse high-speed internet. AT&T rethink possible. So far, so good today. Miguel Montero crushes one to deep left. Soriano with the catch. Nicely done. And a lot better going back on balls this year. I don't know how many times we can say it. He's probably the most improved defender in the National League this season. That was a ball that would have been rattling off the vines last year, rolling back toward the infield. Montero ends up with an extra base hit. This year, just an F7. Swinging strike on Goldschmidt, who just keeps getting better and better as the season has gone along. Fly ball to left. Soriano racing after it, takes a look into the corner. It lands fair on the warning track, and it'll be a double for Goldschmidt. He had 193 in April, but has hit over 300 and his average increasing every month since. Not really much more Soriano could do on that one. The ball right in the corner up against the sidewall. Tries to reach out and make a backhanded play, but Goldschmidt ends up at second base with a double. Strike one. Richmond left his feet, even though nobody was really in the area. You see Castro just trying to keep him honest. I like the fact that the Cubs are aware that Goldschmidt will run. We saw Ryan Dempster check on him over at first base earlier in the ball game, and now a check at second base just to make sure Goldschmidt doesn't get that walking lead and try to advance to third. Interesting note in the uh, Arizona Republic regarding the Diamondbacks second half schedule. Nice grab by that Cub fan in the front row. As it currently stands starting yesterday at a stretch of 53 games with just two days off. The original Diamondbacks schedule had 23 games in a row without an off day. Later in the year mid August to September 5th but that's against the rules. I think 20 is the limit, right? I think schedule. So, yeah. But uh, MLB didn't notice it, and the Diamondbacks didn't notice it. The Union didn't catch it, so they're probably going to play a doubleheader in there to try to build in an off day. How about that? Hmm. Hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. Uh, and if they do play a doubleheader, it'll be the first to chase field. Since they started play in 1998, as we look at the Cubs forward upcoming schedule, WGN tomorrow, off day Monday, back at it Tuesday night. We'll have game two against the Miami Marlins Wednesday night. Ford manufacturers of more fuel efficient vehicles than any other brand. Check them out at your local Ford store or online at localfordstores.com.
Three and two on Drew. Here it is. Swing and a miss. He got him. Second strikeout for Dempster. Usually the last thing to come back after a lengthy stint on the disabled list is your strike zone awareness. And Stephen Drew chases a real bad splitter in the dirt. Nice stop by Giovanni Soto. It's Chris Young with two outs. We don't know for sure, but if Jason Kubel didn't tweak that hamstring yesterday, Chris Young might have been out of their lineup today. Okay, Kurt Gibson was going to get Parra in there, considering Parra's five for eight against Brian Dempster in his career. And actually, now he's six for ten with the one for two today. Young's been struggling, but it's a another day with Kubel day to day with a hamstring. Slider missed three and zero. Oh. Jeff Blum on deck. For ball four. So here's Blum with two on and two down. Almost looked like a pitch around right there by Ryan Dempster. Uh, he did get Young to ground into a 6 4 double play back in the second inning, but if you look at the numbers uh, for Chris Young in his career against Ryan Dempster, coming into play today, he was five for his last seven with two doubles and a triple. So Ryan Dempster was remembering those at bats rather than the first one in the game today. Good splitter to start this at bat. One strike on Blum. Diamondbacks won the West last year. 94 wins. They went from the third worst record in baseball to the sixth best. Knocked out in the first round by the Brewers. Game five went 10 innings. It's been a struggle this year to stay consistent as Blum swings and misses, and Dempster for the second straight inning gets out of a jam with two runners on. One nothing Cubs.
StubHub, where you'll find the seats you want and the freedom to choose where you want to sit in those seats that you just chose. StubHub is the official fan-to-fan ticket marketplace of the Chicago Cubs. For more information, visit Cubs.com slash StubHub. All right. A, uh, either a player, I doubt that, or a fan of the Chelsea Football Club. And the soccer powerhouse. And ready for the friendly in the confines coming up next weekend. <laughs> Underway here in the bottom of the fourth. One strike on Alfonso Soriano. Let's grab the lead with a run in the third. Starlet Castro beat out a double play ball. Albuena scored the run. Saunders winds and deals. Base hit. Soriano's five for six in the series. He squared the ball up three times in yesterday's game, but his fourth hit was just like this. Off-speed pitch, low and away, stayed on it, hooked it back to left field. Yesterday it went for a double. Today, a single to left field. Baker 0 for 1. Stabbed at it, missed it. Looking a page out of the Reed Johnson book there. Jeff Blum was playing extremely deep at third base. Trying to take advantage, get a couple runners on there for Giovanni Soto. Foul tip. 0 oh, 2. Matchup tomorrow here on WGN. Trevor Cahill and Matt Garza, a couple of righties. Hit the air at one o'clock with a leadoff man. Oh, the leadoff man plus tomorrow. Two and two. In the mouth. Everything goes in the mouth. That's right. <laughs> Lunch time. All of a sudden, three and two. What else can I chew on? Give me those glasses. Toronto all over the Indians. 8 2 in the bottom of the third. Encarnacion and Escobar with homers. For the Jays. Got him on a foul tip. Let's step aside and see what's coming up on WGN. One on, one out, and the pitch to Soto is up and in. The Yankees have scored twice in the third. They lead the Angels four to two. Curtis Granderson with a two-run homer. Robinson Cano went deep in the first.
the call on the inside corner. It's interesting. We've seen some batters, you know, move their hands, kind of try to sell it that the pitch is in off the plate. When you think about an umpire calling a pitch, I mean, really, he's supposed to not even consider those things, right? He's looking at the ball where it crosses a plate. Yet they are human. And they make calls on check swings without the assistance of the base umpires who have a much better view of it. One eye on the ball, one eye on the bat, I guess. Theoretically, a guy moving his hands or moving his body out of the way would have no effect on the ball or strike call. And a foul. It's a game of educated guesses. Doesn't necessarily have to be, but it is. Montero blocked it. Soriano took off, and he's going to get in. I'll tell you, when Joe Saunders throws a wild pitch, he doesn't mess around. That's about the fourth or fifth pitch that he's bounced way out in front of home plate. Montero did a nice job of blocking it, but it got far enough away that Soriano got a real good read, saw that pitch in the dirt, and goes into second on his belly. Young trying to get behind the ball. Soriano goes halfway. Now he'll head back to second. And we want to let our AT&T viewers, viewers in Chicago and around the country on WGN America know that during every Cubs home game, if you go to channel 780 or high definition channel 1780, you can see a special multi-view presentation that shows you all our different live camera angles here at Wrigley Field. It's pretty cool. So if you want to direct the game along with Skip Ellison, Give a look to AT&T Uvers Channel 780 or HD Channel 1780. Darwin Barney, fair ball, left field corner, Cubs with another run. It's a double for Barney, two to nothing. Let's take a look at our Nissan drive of the game. Darwin Barney gets a middle in fastball and absolutely smokes it down that third baseline. Jeff Blum barely timed to react at third. By the time Gerardo Parra is able to track it down, Alfonso Soriano scores a second run of the game for the Cubs. Get to your Nissan dealer for special offers. Nissan innovation that excites. Visit ChooseNissan.com. Swinging strike to Valbuena. And we've talked before, Len, about Dave McKay, uh, who wears many hats on the Cubs coaching staff, but uh, also the base running instructor. And he has that chart that we see down in the Cubs clubhouse where he gives guys uh, a star for something good on the bases and a demerit for something bad on the bases. Uh, Alfonso Soriano, with his read on that pitch in the dirt, getting to second base. Allowed him to score on that ball, hit down the left field corner by Darwin Barney. So he'll get a star on his report card. Well, I think the purpose of that one is serious for players. There's a base hit. Val Buena's going to knock in Barney. Three to nothing. Just to finish that thought, it's to get the players to think that there's more than one way to score runs in this game. Intelligent, aggressive base running will score more runs than any other fundamental in the game. Now, Buena with a ringing single into center field. Darwin Barney with a great jump at second base. He'll score easily. A 
Ryan Dempster coming up benefiting from these tack on runs now with a three nothing lead. I mentioned that Ryan was very talkative before the ball game today down in the Cubs clubhouse. I think he'd really like to hit a home run today. That ain't going to do it. Just missed. <laughs> Blum will throw him out. Back to back two out RBI hits. Barney and Valbuena and the Cubs lead three zip. The Curious Bank. Remember FDIC. Barney and Valbuena picking up RBIs, so Anthony Rizzo's got to get into the act. The other three infielders have knocked in runs. Starlin Castro back in the third inning. Didn't bring it up at the time, Lynn, but uh, once again, Kurt Gibson and the Diamondbacks electing to pitch to the number eight hitter with the pitcher on deck and a base open, and this time it hurt him. Luis Valbuena with a base hit back up the middle of the field to drive home Darwin Barney. Had two opportunities in the ballgame yesterday to do exactly the same thing. I mentioned the uh, Diamondbacks with only eight intentional walks the entire season. And one on Joe Saunders. Dempster was 63 pitches over his five shutout innings at the Mets last Sunday. It's at 70 pitches and counting right now. It's three and one on the pitcher. Hara on deck. Off the inning. Cubs have now walked 
twenty seven nine hitters. Those would be pitchers in National League ball most in the National League. As far as swings and foul tips. It especially hurts when it's leading off an inning and then you roll around to the top of the order with a runner on base already. Never a good time to walk the opposing pitcher, but especially not leading off an inning. I should note uh, those 27 walks do include the interleague games against AL clubs. Bouncer to Rizzo. Three, six, three, double play. Just like that, two outs. Perfect feed. Oh, man, you talk about slowing the game down. That's where you'll see a lot of young players really try to rush that throw to second base, knowing you've got to get back to cover the bag at first. But Rizzo took his time getting the ball to Castro, who also took his time and made a good throw back to Rizzo. That's about as good as you can do it right there. Fastball on Aaron Hill, who's one out of two. Hill with two cycles already this season, 12 days apart. Big home run swing that time, fouled it back, 0 oh 2. At Aaron Hill's size, the fact that he plays one of the middle infield spots, and then you look at his bat. That's the uh, bat of a home run hitter. Big barrel. Does not have what you'd call a real short swing. He wants to pull, he wants to hit the ball in the air if at all possible. And we talked about that series in Arizona earlier this year. He was about as hot as a hitter could possibly get in that series. Oh, count. Slip by Soriano, but no problem as Ryan Dempster now with 32 consecutive scoreless innings. Cubs lead 3 0.
bank the curious bank for FDIC and no that is not a split screen. It's the uh, railing of the uh, upper deck. Three nothing the Cubs have the lead. About this, the Diamondbacks so far in this series, covering 14 innings offensively, have had one runner reach third base. That was Willie Bloomquist, who scored in the first inning yesterday. That's it. Fair ball, Reed Johnson, and he'll have a leadoff double. Struggled so much early this season against left handed starting pitching, but Reed Johnson and his hot bat and Jeff Baker and his resurgence lately have uh, slowly but surely started to turn those numbers against lefties around. As a team, the Cubs are 8 and 18 against lefties, but they've won five of their last seven. Strike on Castro. Without a hit today, but does have an RBI. Side that time one and one. Missed in again on a fastball. Trying to make it five straight home wins. You get over 500 at home. Last time that was the case, there was six and five at home last year on April 23rd. Still available for the 2012 Cubs season, including the next series against the Marlins starting this Tuesday at Wrigley Field. To purchase tickets, visit Cubs.com, call 1 800 the Cubs, or visit the Wrigley Field box office. Home run swing on that 3 1 pitch by Starling Castro. We're seeing uh, more and more of that as we get deeper into the season. When he gets into those good hitters' counts, thinks he's going to get a fastball, he's really been letting it go. Center field sending Young back. Johnson should be able to tag. Plenty deep enough. And he's a third with one out. A good at bat by Starlin Castro. And you know, well, there was so much talk early in the season about he's not patient enough. He doesn't take enough walks. And he probably could benefit from taking a few more base on balls. But Early in the season, it seemed like he made up his mind before he got in the batter's box. I'm going to take the first pitch this at bat. I'm going to swing at the first pitch this at bat. And with each successive pitch, it was almost like he had made up his mind before the ball was delivered. 
during that particular at bat, you could see him. He was ready to hit, but laid off some borderline pitches. Got the count in his favor, took a good aggressive swing, unfortunately fouled it off, and then hits the deep fly ball to move Reed Johnson up to third. But I think he's doing a much better job of recognizing pitches and laying off the ones that he can't do much damage with. No consolation for Starlin. He wants to get a hit every at bat. Sets it up for Rizzo as the Diamondbacks pull their infielders in. It's a pitch off the plate inside. Joe Saunders apparently was watching the ball game yesterday. We talked about Anthony Rizzo driving the ball to the opposite field a couple of times for base hits. And so far in this game, Saunders has just tried to crowd him, crowd him, crowd him off that inside corner of the plate. Swing and a miss, one and two. So the first Cub ever to have three game winning RBIs in his first five games with the team. Outside. Two to the Rizzo fights it off. The defensive swing here just to stay alive in the at bat. But fooled a little bit by that off speed pitch. Just to get enough of it to foul it back to the bricks and stay alive. Ground ball backhanded by Goldschmidt. Johnson holding and Goldschmidt dives and beats Rizzo to first base. I don't even want to think about a collision of those two big men. Both wearing number 44 almost became 88 here if they make contact. I'll tell you, I've been really impressed with Paul Goldschmidt. He's a good athlete for a big bodied first baseman. With tremendous power, he, he moves his body around pretty good. We mentioned earlier he can steal some bases, plays good defense at first. Diamondbacks have themselves a good one down there. I get the feeling you're going to see Paul Goldschmidt and Anthony Rizzo in a lot of All Star games for the National League moving forward. We'll have to fight over who gets to wear 44. <laughs> Ball on the corner. Soriano didn't think so. One and two. But when a hitter's hot at the plate, he knows his strike zone. Occasionally you can get into a slump and lose your zone, but right now, Alfonso Soriano, he knows that pitch is off the plate. Swings at a high fastball, and Saunders gets out of it, but he trails three nothing after five.
in-game box score for a limited time. Get exceptional lease deals on a new 2012 BMW 3 Series. Visit ChicagolandBMW.com for more information. Cubs have spread it around today, getting RBIs from three of their four infielders. Ryan Dempster shutting him out again. And I've heard we are featuring the Rolling Stones today, celebrating their 50th anniversary. First live show ever, Bob, was July 12th, 1962. It's remarkable that they're even alive. Still rocking. Middle of the order here for the Diamondbacks, 3 4 5. There is action in the Cubs' pen. Swing and a miss. Time for our Xfinity catcher profile protecting home for the Diamondbacks. Miguel Montero signed as an undrafted free agent back in 2001. Where he ranks in the National League in caught stealing percentage, innings caught, 45 RBIs, tied for second among major league catchers, and his 22 RBIs in the month of June, a career high for him. Xfinity home. Offer state of the art features that help you stay connected to your home and family anytime, anywhere. And he signed the largest contract to date in Diamondbacks history in late May. Five years, 60 million. And will go through 2017. Oh, and two. Manny Corpus is the righty on the left. Scott Main is the lefty on the right. And we've talked about why pitchers do that in the bullpen. It's uh, for the sake of the bullpen catchers. If you've got the two pitchers flipped on those mounds out there, uh, the ball would be coming out of almost exactly the same area. And this makes it a little easier on the catchers. Something that rarely happens in this game. Dempster's 2-2 two, two pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Goes again on 33 consecutive scoreless innings. Goldschmidt with a single and a double. Popped up near second base. Darwin Barney. Dempster cruising along with a 3 nothing lead.
Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers for their support of youth, local youth baseball leagues. Through the Chevy Youth Baseball Program, the local Chevrolet dealers support over 30,000 young ball players in their communities. These local Chevy dealers provide leagues with equipment kits, instructional clinics, and financial support. From the big leagues to the youth leagues, Chevy is truly the official vehicle of baseball. Baker fouls off into the uh, second or third row right behind home plate. Ryan Dempster with six more shutout innings, five consecutive scoreless starts. James Russell cranking it up in the bullpen. I think Ryan is done for the day. So his scoreless streak now at 33 innings and counting. That'll be charged by Stephen Drew. And he airmails it into the stands as Baker will get an extra base. Two base error for Stephen Drew and Jeff Baker is at second with nobody out. It looked like a pretty routine play for the Diamondback shortstop. Two hopper hit right at him, fields it on the move. Rather than set his feet, he elects to throw while he's running and airmails it over Paul Goldschmidt into the bleachers on the first base side of the field. He mistook that young man for Paul Goldschmidt. The Cubs' modern day record for. Consecutive scoreless innings by a starting pitcher, Ed Ruhlbach, in 1908, 44 in a row. But Dempster's uh, 11 innings away from matching that. One question uh, practically is will he get 11 more innings with the Chicago Cubs? With all the scouts circling, and there's got to be a lot of contenders who are thinking if we want Ryan Dempster, we don't want him to continue to throw shutout innings for another team. We want him with us. This has been an incredible run. And I guarantee you, if you ask Ryan Dempster about it, uh, he would say it's just a byproduct of focusing on each pitch you make. Don't get too far ahead of yourself. Don't tell yourself before a start, I need X number of innings to. Tie the record or pass the record. Just go out there and execute each pitch. And if you do that, uh, you look up at the end of the day, you'll be right where you want to be. You might end the day with the best ERA in the majors. Right now it's at 186. And the 33 in a row. You see the scouts logging all the pitches. Longest in the majors as he has uh, passed R.A. Dickey. Full count on Soto. Jared Weaver currently leads the majors at 196. Dempster came in at 199. Weaver not pitching today, so Dempster pretty good shape. Base hit center field. Stop sign put on by Pat Listash. We got the corners covered with no outs. Follow the Cubs with the MLB.com at bat 12 app for your iPhone, iPad, Android, and Windows Mobile. Get live audio, pitch tracking, video highlights, and more. Text at bat to 31826 or visit Cubs.com for details. Trouble for Joe Saunders. And now Darwin Barney who doubled home the Cubs second run in the fourth. After him Valbuena. Who knocked in Barney. He tried to bunt. But Baker was ready to charge hard toward the plate. Well, many times a hitter when he's in the on deck circle before he makes his way up to take the at bat in a situation like this he'll have a sign with uh, the third base coach in this case Pat Listash letting him know I might try to bunt for a base hit let that runner at third base know. 
Doesn't mean he's necessarily going to, but just to make that runner at third aware that there's a possibility. What's that two for one bunt in this situation? Ideally, you bunt it perfectly, get the runner home from third, have runners at first and second, nobody out. At worst, get it down. It acts as a sacrifice bunt to move two score or two runners into scoring position. Up there for Saunders, he's coming off the disabled list. Diamondbacks have activity in their bullpen. We'll go six, four, three. So the good news is the Cubs lead four nothing, but Barney will not be credited with an RBI. It's an unearned run. Buena at the plate. We see Joe Mather has jumped into the on deck circle, so Dempster is done. And it'll be James Russell in the seventh. What a run for Dempster. Mm. Well, he made his way through this Diamondbacks order rather easily today, and I don't think he had his best stuff today. I don't even know if the streak has been about his stuff, has it? It's been about everything else. <laughs> Hitting spots. Picking the right pitch to throw in a certain situation. I'm sure he would credit his defense around him. Being a ground ball pitcher. And remember, two or three of those starts he pitched with a sore lat before he went to the DL. That's probably the most impressive part of it. Valbuena bounces to the pitcher. The Cubs get an unearned tally. Lead 4-0 as we head off to the seventh. That's the Rolling Stones with the last time. That's our Bud Fan Cam brought to you by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. 
All right, and Dempster's buds on the mound. James Russell coming in in relief of Dempster. Real strong once again today. Six innings of four hit shutout baseball. That was the Rolling Stones cover version of the Lennon Bob All Star Band version of the last time. Never listen to my advice. Four nothing, the Cubs have the lead. <laughs> so I saw Jeff Samarja in the Cubs clubhouse over near the. Uh, Lunchroom today. And then I saw him talking to Chris Bosio at the same time near his locker. Before realizing that I was looking at the back of James Russell's head. We have a new term the back of the head doppelganger. <laughs> and for Samarja, that guy is Russell, and for Russell, it's Samarja. I'm telling you, if we had them stand next to one another and you could only see the back of their head and that hair, you would not know the difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Samarja is just a little bit taller than James Russell, and yeah, from behind you would never know the difference with that hair. Called strike three on a fastball. Freezes Drew. Receiving job that time by Giovanni Soto, making that borderline pitch look like it was all over the strike zone. <laughs> strike to Young. Also, oh, partner, very quickly, you alluded to our boating mishap in uh, yeah. Knoxville over the break, and. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Daryl and Jenny Hedrick. Now, Daryl is a good friend of Mick Gillespie's, and uh, Daryl has the boat. So I'm going to go over and join Mick to go fishing in the morning. And Daryl went out just to make sure the boat was in good running order and jumped in and backed it away from the dock. And as he turned to go out into the cove, and swung on and missed, the throttle stuck wide open on the boat. And it started. Of popping a wheelie for lack of a better term and spinning around in circles like a top until ultimately the boat started taking on water and sank. Deep left center gone. A home run for Young. Way to ruin a story, Chris Young. His ninth of the year. And it's now four to one. But everybody was okay except yep. for the boat. Right? Everybody survived a couple of uh, ill advised rescue attempts, just didn't make it happen. The boat is now sitting at the bottom of the cove. Now I'm told that this fall the water will go out and they will be able to walk out and get the boat, but right now it's under 20 feet of Lake Douglas water. So Daryl Hedrick. From this point forward, we're known as Captain <laughs> Stubing, and we're going to call Mick Gillespie Gilligan. <laughs> well, it's been a struggle for Chris Young. And he gets his team on the board here in the seventh inning. Got Blum turning around, batting right handed against the Southpaw Russell. Good looking swing on that. One one pitch now one and two. Foot sliders in the dirt. Just thinking that last swing by Jeff Blum. You know the advent of uh, video scouting and. Looking at your at bats and breaking down your swing, it's been huge in baseball, but it's also lent itself very well to some practical jokes. Got a feeling that's not the last time Jeff Blum's going to see that swing. Jeff Baker, one hands it, two outs. Get a pinch hitter for the starter Saunders. 
be Ryan Roberts. Pinch hitter. Joe Saunders went six innings, gave up four runs, three earned. Swing and a miss. Jay Cutler getting ready for the stretch. Homer with one out with Arizona on the board. Cubs lead four to one. Payoff delivery. And that one feathered out over Barney and into right center to keep the inning alive. Bring up Hara for the fourth time. 38,068 here at beautiful Wrigley Field today. Will break up this meeting. Sean Camp throwing in the Cubs bullpen. Like Marvin Hudson was saying, you ever hear the one about the asking Giovanni Soto if he's ever met Robert Fick? Favorites. Yep. Robert Fick came off the DL one year with the Nationals here at Wrigley Field. First at bat, <laughs> called strike three. Said three words. One was a magic word to Marvin Hudson. The other two words were you and Marvin. <laughs> we got kicked out. <laughs> Stretch time with Jay Cutler. Bears conductor for take me out to the ball game. Bears quarterback Jay Cutler. All right, Cubs fans, let me hear you. A one, a two, a three. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care if I ever get back. It's root, root, root. Get some runs.
as we get into the bottom of the seventh. And it's our pleasure to have with us Bears quarterback Jay Cutler in the booth. After the seventh inning stretch, Brian Shaw, the new Diamondbacks pitcher, and he'll face pinch hitter David DeJesus. Jay, welcome to the booth. Nice job with the stretch. Thank you. I, uh, the first pitch is the easy part. The seventh inning stretch to get you. <laughs> Six innings just to sit there and dread it. Well, you have ice cold veins, but uh, we're, yeah, you start getting nervous when you went over to the radio booth and looked uh -huh, down with uh -huh. old man. Well, you did a nice job. Thank you. Got all the words right. Yep. Yeah, and fired a rocket with that first pitch. Uh, yeah, that's that's I can do that. I can do that every game. <laughs> did you play baseball as a kid? Were you I a did. pitcher? I, no, I played shortstop. Played a lot of baseball. Probably played more baseball than I did anything growing up. So it's always fun to come out here. Well, Jesus up in the air out into right center as Chris Young. We'll make the catch. Let's take a look at Jay and his day job. Navigating that pocket and a touchdown. Well, Jay, we've talked today already about some of the players on the field for the Cubs and the ability to slow the game down. Just watching that play as your line is, you know, trying to hold off the defensive line. And I know you can feel those guys getting close. How do you slow the game down when that happens? Right, you know, the more you're in there, the more you go to practice, the older you get, the slower it gets. And, you know, as the season goes on, you get a feel for the offensive line. And, you know, things just kind of naturally slow down for you. And, uh, that's kind of what you want towards the end of the season. Everything to be slow and, and you to be moving fast. Brandon Marshall is here. And uh, you're reunited. Yeah. he uh, Good to get that guy back. And Phil Emery done a great job of putting his team together and giving us a chance to win offensively. We, we got some new guys. And uh, Jeremy Bates is a coach. So we, we got some guys that are going to help us uh, down, the, down the long run. Swing and a miss by Reed Johnson. 0-2 the count. Now, were you really born in Santa Claus, Indiana? I wasn't. I was born in Georgia, but okay. I lived. I grew up in Santa Claus, Indiana, so uh, that is accurate. How big a town is Santa Claus? Uh, a couple thousand. It's small. Was it named after anybody? I think Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my guess. Yes. Uh, here's your two for Shaw. <laughs> you didn't think that question through. Yeah. If he was from Easter Bunny, then I'd, <laughs> I'd ask a question. That was a trick question, but he, he, he was right right on top of it. There you go. Maybe named after that guy. Uh, do you like training camp? I know you know you got a massive playbook, but um, is there a point, even during the preseason, where you're like, let's let's play for real? Here? Yeah, I think the first two weeks it's fun. It's everyone, you know, you're you're away, you're in the dorms, it's kind of like college. Everyone's getting along. And, uh, you know, that third week, I think everyone gets kind of tired. I mean, not myself because I'm a quarterback. Everyone gets tired of banging each other. And that's kind of the breaking point where it's like, all right, let's let's move on and let's do something else. But those first two weeks go by, I mean, I really enjoy it. I think it's a good team bonding experience. I think everybody is very pumped about this upcoming season. And a new offensive coordinator, Mike Tice. Yeah, uh, Mike's done a great job this offseason off of putting the offense together and making sure that, We've got enough plays and enough, uh, you know, things changing up for everyone to get a chance to get in the game and be successful. And that's kind of his philosophy: is put put our guys that can make plays and into positions where they can they can make those things happen for us. Rizzo on deck, one and one on Castro, and with Jay Cutler of the Chicago Bears. Had a lot of your teammates up here in the past. In fact, I think Robbie Gold seems to stretch about four times a year. Robbie is a uh, he, he comes a lot. <laughs> He's a big fan and he we, is. we don't even invite him. He just, he just comes shows in up here and sings. Yeah. He just knocks on the door. Is anybody <laughs> singing today? And they've all done a really nice job. Got a couple of your offensive linemen in here. They're big guys and that's what you want. They the are. Bigger the, the better, the bigger right? The better. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Keep feeding them. Khalil Bell will be here tomorrow. In fact, what yeah. should we ask him? What would oh, be a good goodness. question other than is Santa Claus named after? I don't know. I mean, his outfit, I'm sure, is going to be something of, you can ask him about. So I'm sure he's going to be dressed in uh, something exotic. Kind of like your sneakers. Yeah, I, uh, I've got a lot of compliments on these, actually. Yeah, I like them. Yeah. Nike's finest. There you go.
in the dirt. Oh my. That's a bear shirt. I, I recognize Soldier Field Dent and 1985. That's all you need to know. Tailgating. Tailgating. Beer. Right. Yeah. Ditka. Ditka. It's like a word scramble. Uh oh. Phone's blowing up. Hey, you're on TV. <laughs> It was a 3 2, and Castro draws the walk. What's Jay Cutler's hobby? It has nothing to do with football. What do you like to do when you have nothing to do? You know, we, we, we're down in Nashville a lot. We got a house down there. So, you know, we just kind of stay at home and relax. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a baby on the way now, so we're just kind of trying to uh, sleep as much as possible. Uh, Chris is trying to sleep as much as possible before that. Uh, that happens. Yeah, you can sleep now and then that's it for about four or five years. <laughs> <laughs> then they become teenagers, get their driver's license, and you never you, sleep again. You, know, you never see them either. <laughs> he was looking for his first hit today. He's grounded out twice and flied out. Gets past everybody, and there Castro will advance to second. Well, Starlin, just 22 years old, and this is his third year. But Anthony Rizzo, also 22, first go around. Jay, he's in a big spotlight here. If you had any advice for him, just playing in a market like this with all the media and you got Twitter and everything, what would your advice be for Anthony Rizzo? You know, just, just stay. You know, just do the market, do the do the media you have to do, and just stay away. You know, just. Keep grinding. Um, just come and work every day. There's going to be uh, there's going to be good and there's going to be bad out there, and it's going to change from day to day. Uh, don't uh, don't get wrapped up in it. I think he's doing a great job so far. And That's there's a base there. hit in the left. Castro coming there around. Parra with a good arm. The throw to the plate. Oh my! Oh. oh. That's why Parra won the Gold Glove last year. Jay, best of luck coming up Thank in you 2012. Guys. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. Johnson, limited duty this year has been tremendous. Two hits. Luis Valbuena hitting eight. Two hits and an RBI. Ryan Dempster, the story of the day. 33 consecutive scoreless innings. That's the longest such streak this year in the majors. Visit your local Chicagoland Honda dealer today. Test drive a 2012 Honda Accord. Jesus stays into place center. We'll move Reed Johnson over to right. A 
And right hander Sean Camp is on. Oh, another day, another appearance. Yep. Well, I tell you, you talked to Dale Swaim about the improvement in the Cubs recently, and he will point directly to Sean Camp, James Russell, and Manny Corpus uh, settling down that bullpen, giving him three options late in a ball game to get the ball ultimately to Carlos Marmol. <laughs> Bounces to Barney. Well, the other thing you realize, Jay Cutler comes into the booth, and I remember being around Brett Farr 15 years ago. These guys are quarterbacks, and they're enormous. They Jay Cutler's as big as a linebacker was, you know, 25 oh, yeah. years ago. Well, they take a pounding. There's no question about it. It helps to, to be a big, strong guy at that position. Yeah, I would have bet money Jay Cutler was a pitcher back in Santa Claus, Indiana, but. Uh, it was a shortstop. Ah! He's a fan. He's right back in his uh, second row seat near the dugout. He could have had the front row, but he feels more comfortable with a line in front of him. The like center's that. in front of him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> David Hernandez in the visiting bullpen. Ben Sherlock looking on. Cooled off just a little bit. And it has started to drizzle just a little bit. I think that's a coincidence. <laughs> Outside. Three and two. Montero next. A drizzle we can deal with. Uh, what we had yesterday was the rainforest out here. It was raining buckets. Couldn't see the scoreboard for a while here, Wrigley Field. He walked him. Justin Upton, Bob, even when he's struggling or just okay, and he's been in a fairly good stretch, raining a little harder now. He's got that presence. Guys don't just want to groove one right in there. We're on a couple of walks today. The fans are heading for cover. Some brought their own cover, came prepared. Called it foul into the upper deck.
slider for a strike. Can't pass aside from Soto. Here's a pitch. Another foul. Yep, looking for that ground ball somewhere to the right side of the infield. The Cubs pull Montero to pull on the infield, to slightly to hit it the other way in the outfield. You can see David DeJesus out there in center field, shaded a few steps over toward the gap in left center. Montero doesn't strike me as the kind of hitter that wants to go to the opposite field. He wants to lift that ball in the air to right field and try to hit it out of the park more often than not. Wide open stance. Later today, the Cardinals will be at Cincinnati. The Pirates tonight are at Milwaukee. Got a tie atop the division. Reds and Pirates both at 48 and 38. Reds won last night. The Pirates lost. Got it. Call strike three. Montero has now struck out three times today, twice looking. That's a high sinker from Sean Camp. Not normally the location he wants to throw that pitch, but our Xfinity pitch track shows it's clearly right there at the top of the zone. Yeah, even hitters aren't used to looking for sinkers up at the top of the strike zone. That's a pitch that 99.9% .9 of sinker ball pitchers want to throw down around the knees. Castro feeds Barney to end the inning. Cubs lead 4 1 in the eighth. Celebrating Ron Santo. 9.30 p.m. on Sunday, July 22nd. Cubs leading 4-1. to 
Well, he would have loved the way this team is playing here lately. David Hernandez is on for Arizona. Carlos Marmol, the Cubs closer, up in the bullpen. And the 0 1 to Soriano, swing and a miss on a breaking ball. Ryan LaHare will bat for Sean Camp next. Popped him up behind the plate. Montero doesn't have a play. The wind has turned around once again as you get a look at the numbers on David Hernandez this season. Big time strikeout pitcher. In the air to center, Chris Young for the out. Here's the All Star LaHare. All for one on Tuesday for the National League. Now with an 8 0 win. Swings over the top of 95 for strike one. You remember I was talking about video and how it can be used to help you or hurt you. I don't think that's the last time Brian LaHare is going to see that swing. Teammates can be really cruel sometimes. Better hack that time. Fouls it off to the third base side. To a knee is Aaron Hill back up and throws him out. Two outs are to bring up Soto, who's two for three. Looking ahead to the top of the ninth, Drew Young and Blum do up against Carlos Marble. For a strike. The Cubs tweeting uh, after the game today. David De Jesus will be at the Cubs store. He'll be signing items for ALS Day, and they're encouraging fans to donate twenty dollars to ALS research. We got a nice note from Ed Hinson from Sholo, Arizona. Said after the long rain delay yesterday and the thought of a possible doubleheader makeup, he uh, started to look back. And when the Cubs had doubleheaders on their original schedule, he's got a 1958 Cubs schedule. There were 20 scheduled doubleheaders that year. Wow. Times have changed, yes, haven't they? Indeed. We go to the ninth. Here comes Marmel, 4-1.
Closer is on. That's Carlos Marmol. Trying to preserve Ryan Dempster's fifth consecutive win. By the way, following an 18 consecutive winless start streak for Dempster. I mean, just unbelievable. He pitched to an ERA of under four during that stretch, but couldn't buy a win forever. And he decided just not to give up any more runs. <laughs> to Stephen Drew as a fastball outside. You shouldn't see Marmol shake off any Giovanni Soto signs. That's been the new deal with the pitching coach Chris Basio. Whatever Gio puts down, you throw. Or you owe me. There's a riser that missed high. 2-0. and oh. He is throwing a lot more fastballs. And for a lot of us, it was hard to figure out why he stopped throwing the fastball in the first place. He gets it up there 94, 95 with a little bit of tailing action. When he gets it up high in the zone, it seems to have a little hop to it. I mean, no question his slider is his bread and butter pitch, but uh, fastball is not a bad plan B. Out into the right center field, Reed Johnson will chase it down. A leadoff double for Drew. Outer third of the plate and down right where Stephen Drew likes it. I mentioned before he's been trying to hook everything back to right field. This time splits that gap in right center for a leadoff double. As we get near the bottom of the order, I don't know if Jason Kubel is available for a pinch hit appearance today. Now, Kurt Gibson has Lyle Overbay available to hit in that pitcher spot if it gets to that point. I'm sure he'd like to use Kubel if he can. 1 0 on Young. We saw Lyle Overbay in that first base dugout with helmet in hand. It looks like uh, he would be the most logical choice. Unless it was a situation where you didn't need Kubel to run. A uh, sack fly or you know, try to hit a home run to tie the ball game up or give the D-backs a lead. You might see Kubel, but I think barring that, we're going to see Lyle Overbay. Kubel has his batting gloves on. And many times a manager will just tell a guy, put them on no matter what. You want to let the other team think you're available. They can't see where the Cubs can't see whether he's got uh, tennis shoes or spikes on. Now three and one on Young. This is not a situation where Marmel wants to walk people with a three run lead and a runner already on. Bring up the tying run with nobody out. This is Marmel's first outing in eight days. Jason Kubel has jumped into the on deck circle behind Blum. And Manny Corpus was out there throwing earlier along with Scott Main. I mean, like in the sixth inning, they're both going to get up here in the ninth. Slider strike one and one.
Couldn't hold up. Ten previous at bats for Blum against Carlos Marmol. He's one for ten. The one hit was a double. He struck out three times. That slider really hard. 86, 87 miles an hour. Usually it's right around 83 to 85. That can be tricky too. I mean, times when you throw that breaking pitch too hard, it really flattens out. It doesn't take the kind of break that you want it to. Uh, ideally, Carlos Marmol slider has as much downward movement as it has lateral movement across the zone. When he tries to overthrow it occasionally, his hand gets around the baseball, and as you said, it flattens out, becomes a very hittable pitch. Fastball in the dirt. Three and two. Thing is, if he can get a ground ball here, he can get two quick outs. Wants to make Blum put the ball in play. At least get him to swing and miss. Deep right. Johnson back on it. Makes a catch right up against the wall. Runners will hold. Ooh. That ball is clubbed by Jeff Blum. What a play by Reed Johnson. That could be a game saver right there. Boy, Reed really hit that wall hard after making the catch. Never took his eye off the ball. He knew he was getting close to the barrier, but refused to give in to that wall. It drives his right shoulder into the bricks. You can see a little grimace on the face there before getting back up on his feet and firing that ball back to the infield. Well, that certainly sounded like an extra base hit off the bat. And Reed Johnson took it away, so here's Kubel, the pinch hitter. Bounce to Rizzo. They get one. They get two. Cubs win. How about that escape job? In a matter of about 45 seconds, this game ends as the Diamondbacks were threatening with a tying run at the plate, nobody out.